his mercies we are not consumed. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 20 through 26. This is the uh, um, prophet Jeremiah, the writer of this book. And they call Jeremiah the weeping prophet. And if you read Jeremiah in Lamentation, you see why they call him the weeping prophet. That man did some crime. Because of the stuff that he's seen and that he went through. And, and so, I mean, so it, it, it's fitting that they would call him the weeping prophet. So in Lamentations chapter 3, begin with verse number 20. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, My soul has been still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. Verse 26. Yes. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So to the reading to God's word. By his mercies, yet we are not consumed. Also in the book of Psalms 59, you don't have to turn there. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desires upon my enemies. Hosea 10 and 12. So to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your phallogram, for it is time to seek the Lord to come and reign righteousness upon us. Matthew 5 and 7, that's already merciful, for this shall attain mercy. Psalms 103 and 11, for the heaven is high above the earth. So great is the mercy toward them that fear him. Psalms 90 and 14. O oh, satisfy us more early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. By his mercies we are not consumed. And as I looked at this and I read the story <clears throat> in Lamentations 1 through 3, if you read that story, it's just nothing but just like just doom. I mean, it's just sorrow and, and they, they were going through it because they had turned their back on God, so therefore God brought judgment upon them. So therefore they were going through all of these things and like they lost this and they lost that and this didn't work and that didn't work. And, but Jeremiah let him know, but by, by the call of his mercy, you were not consumed. And I, and, I, and I thought about us here at Refreshing Fountain. I mean, uh, uh, last year, the year before last, some of the stuff that we all went through. Yes. And how the devil attacked our bodies. Yes. And, and, you know, some of us were in the hospital and whatever, you know. And we're going through all these things that happened to us. But by his mercy, we were not consumed. Why? Because the love of God, the love, he, he loved us so much that he would not let us be consumed by what we were going through. And then I thought about the story of Job. The Bible says that Job was a, 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 a you know, a, a righteous, a, a up, upright man, one that feared God and shunned evil. And we know that all the stuff that happened to Job, and the Bible says that when the Son of God came to present himself, there was a devil. Coming with the saints. He showed up. And God said, What, what you doing here? There was something walking through the earth to and fro, you know, just, just hanging out and seeking who I made the fire. God said, Have you considered my servant Job? Job was like, God, come on, man. You got a hedge around him. I mean, you know, can't do a man in him no way. So we, we know the story. But through all the death, Job was not consumed. Even with the boils on his body and he said he's sitting in ashes and all that kind of stuff, yet he was not consumed in the end. The Bible said he had more than he had in the beginning. So I want to encourage you that no matter what you are going through, don't you give up. You hold on 
Huh? Because you're not going to be consumed if you hold on to God. Because see, by holding to God's unchanging hand, there's nothing the devil can do to you. And as I landed there this morning, I was meditating and he called me in my spirit and said, you control what the devil can do to you in your life. You control that. When you give your life to God, the devil cannot do nothing to you unless you let him. Uh, and, and that's what happens a lot of times. We let the devil do this and let him do that. Take a, a, a husband and wife in their married relationship. Let's say one is cheating on the other. They know they're cheating. They don't confront the other one about it. They just let it go on. What do they do? They are letting it happen. How do you put a stop to it? You confront that person and say, look, I know what's going on. This is it. This is enough. I'm not putting up with it no more. So how many of us would, would you know, would go years and that month and years and weeks and days and knowing that somebody's cheating on you? We ain't gonna put up with that mess. We'd be like, we'd be like, we'd be like, we like Sweet Brown. Ain't nobody got time for that. Huh? So we will not put up with it. Why? Because it's wrong. You, 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 you bring in pain on me. Sorrow and shame and all that kind of stuff. But yet we let the devil do to us what he want to do. But through all of that, we are not consumed by what the devil is doing. Now, in, in Psalm 59 and 10, David knew that God, some way, somehow, was going to help him to get through what he was going to do. God was going to give him what we call the preventing mercy. Huh? All this stuff is going on, but God is allowing him to have mercy to where he can go through what he got to go through. And in, in our life, and in, in our situation, and our circumstances, the things that we're going through, sometimes, you know, we, we just, you know, we just going through it, though, for you say, by, by three. Just hanging on by three. Oh, yeah, man. But that ain't the way God wants us to live. He said, I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Why do we not have that abundant life? Because we're not using what God has given us. Remember James Brown, you sang a song, you got to use what you got to get what you want. What, what do you have? We have the Spirit of God in us. Huh? Amen. We have a relationship with God. So therefore we can pray to God and speak His Word out of our mouth and watch it manifest in our life. But what that happens a lot of times, we don't do it. We tell somebody, you know, well, pray for me. For what? Just pray for me. I'm just going through. Going through what? Be, as let the pain say, be specific in what you are going through. Now you said pray for me. I'm praying for your head and your toe acting like the devil. Huh? Amen. So I'm so so now you you like like man. I told Pastor pray, but my toe is still aching. But did you say pray for your toe? No, you just said pray for me. What's the me? It's my toe, not my head, not my stomach, not my back. So. When we're going through, remember you will not be consumed because of the mercy of God. And, and I like that uh, today, 20, 22nd verse, it says that the mercy is renewed every morning. Whatever mercy you have through this day on Sunday, Monday is going to be renewed. Renewed every morning. Uh, so it's, it's not like you know your mercy runs out. No, because it's new there. You ain't got to go to say, God, look, I need to re renew my mercy. No, no, no. It's already new every month, every morning. That's what the Bible says. And then when you look at Psalms 68 and 19, it said, He loaded us with benefits. I mean, do, do, do we really know how blessed that we really are? Huh? Amen. The stuff that we, some of us that went through, we could have just threw a hand and gave up and say, forget it, it ain't worth it, I'm going back, I, I ain't going to put it with this mess no more, I'm just through, I'm tired, I'm just throwing it in the towel. I surrender. Then what's going to happen? You could be worse off than what you were the first. I remember when I used to work at the, uh, the proper store in Campbellville, Kentucky, called Parks Bell. <clears throat> and the manager of the store had a brother, uh, he works for the uh, shirt department. But he was not a sheriff, he was, I don't know what you call it, but whenever they go do the raid on folks' houses, he wanted one to go and do the raid and, and they, you know, they bring them, you know, they 
confiscate their liquor, whatever, you know, we live in a dry county. And so he had all this stuff. So I got me to have stuff at his house. Ain't supposed to have it there, but you know, <laughs> all shirt department ain't straight, so they do what they want to do. And so one day, uh, Ray was saying, uh, said, let's have a party. Let's have a party at my house this weekend. So he called his brother. He said, look, I want to have a party this weekend. He said, no problem. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you stuff. I got some. I'll bring you stuff. And then he had some work done at the store. His other brother, his name was James, and he, he was like a, a, a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic, but a, a carpenter. So he does some work at the store. And so Ray was going, he was bugging about this and bugging about that. So one day James came to me and he said, man, this man going to drive me to drinking. Now James, he's an alcoholic anyway, to so drive him to drinking. Come on, I want to say, you already drinking. How he going to drive you to it? You already doing it? So, but a lot of times we will say, man, you know, but man, you know, man, these folks, they get on my last nerve. Okay, if that's your last nerve, what you going to do tomorrow? Huh? If they get on your last nerve today, what are you going to do tomorrow and the day after that? I know what you're thinking in your mind. You're thinking, hmm. But I said, that's a very good question. I'm going to do what Elder Donald preached on last Sunday. I'm going to live in the now. Yeah, but you ain't got no more mercy. You ain't got no more nerves. And you're living in the now. <laughs> so now you're going to complete the crazy. So we, we say that, man, they got on my last nerve. There was a comedian named Mom Baby. And they asked her, they said, Mom, so why you never got married? She said, well, she said, me and they get on my, she only got one nerve. And they get on that. She said, that's why I don't get married. <laughs> so how are you going to say they got on my last nerve? Then two years from now, they got on my last nerve. Ten years from now, they got on my last how many last nerve do you have? <laughs> they said cat got nine live, and that's a lie. So we didn't kill some cat, and they ain't came back. So, <laughs> so, but we say things, and so we got to be careful what we speak out of our mouth because what you speak out of your mouth can manifest in the flesh. It can be, it can, it can manifest. So we got to be careful what we say. But know that when you're going through, you are not being consumed. Amen. You ain't big soon because you're going through. Don't give up. Don't, don't look at it like, well, this is the end. No, this ain't the end. This is just the beginning. Uh, Elder Pam and I went to, we had a meeting yesterday. We went to uh, Cheese Factory. And we had to wait. We sat down, you know, and, and we stand up. She, she sat down. And the young man said, You want to sit down? I said, No, I said, We're good. You can sit down. I'm, I'm good. So another white couple came in, and, and so the wife sat down next to Pam. And so the young man got up to the other man, he didn't sit down. The man said, no, I said, uh, he said uh, I'm, not, I'm not old enough there yet. I said, well, I am. I wouldn't sit down. He looked at me, and he said, yeah, right. I said, yeah, I, I, I'm old enough. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 64. He said, you got me by six months. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I said, I'm old enough. Then he said, wait a minute. He said, you 64 and I'm six months behind you. Why you look so much better than I do? Why you look young and I look old? I said, you have to think like I think. I'm like good wine, I just get better with age. Well, he said, I'm like vinegar, I just draw up. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, so, you know, he, he was speaking out of his mouth with us. And I said, but I said, but well, you know, you, you have to, you know, you have to say what's going on in you. And he said, you know, he said, well, I'm like, well, cheap wine ain't no good, you know. He said, I'll just go on, 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 the, on, on, the, on the pitiful side. And you know what, they feel sorry for me. I said, well, I said, is it working? He said, yeah. He said, the young man got up, didn't he? I said, yeah, and I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we just came on conversation, though. But I was, I wanted, you know, and I was trying to get him to see, but you got to speak over your life. I didn't want to get in and start preaching, though, but I wanted, you know, I said, you got you to say to yourself, I'm just like good one. I just get better with age. He said, no. He said, I'm not. He said, I'm not better. I just, I just draw up. And he, he did look older than me, but I didn't tell him that. And then he told me, he said, he said, I'm going to have poor eyesight. He said, how come I don't see what you see? He said, when I look in the mirror, I said, I, I, said, I see this old man. But you talking about, the way you talk about, you think, I don't, I don't look like that to you. I said, you don't. Well, my eyesight must be bad because I sure don't see what you see. 
but it's what you say in your, when you speak over yourself. But just know that you're not going to be consumed. Sometimes, you know, say, man, I don't, I don't know if I can take it anymore or not. Remember the scripture, he put them all on his death, we can bear it. Yes. And even with the temptation, he make a way to escape. So yes. either, I mean, if we think about these things, the devil cannot defeat us. He can't. The fight is already fixed. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life that more abundantly. The devil come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Who are you going with? I'm going with the one that's going to give me abundant life. Well, why am I putting up with the devil? All he want to do is steal, kill, and destroy me. Yes. I ain't got to put up with that. Yes. No, 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 no. Wrong answer. So remember, whatever you're going through, you are not going to be consumed. God will not allow you to be consumed. Just like a father or a mother look at their child and they see something coming through their child, they want to make sure that child get out of the way or they stop what's coming. Why? But they're not going to let their child get hurt. Know that it's by his mercies we are not consumed. Yes.